Hello, my fellow speakers. This is Brian, the speaker for the dead, coming to you today with another video on something that everybody else has been kind of covering, but I wanted to cover it as well because um, I had seen it, but just hadn't got, had a chance to get around to responding to it. And then I saw everybody else start making videos. So I'm just like, well, too late. Um, but I want to give you my take anyway. What we're going to talk about today is the interview that was done with Henry Cavill. And for those of you who don't know who Henry Cavill is, he is the man who has been playing Superman through the last uh, few Superman films. He was uh, he played the part uh, in Superman and then in Batman versus Superman and uh, Justice League, um, all of which were kind of disappointing films, especially the last one. Uh, but Batman versus Superman was terrible on a whole another level too so but the original but his version of superman wasn't bad it was just it wasn't as good as it's christopher reeves to me will always be the ultimate superman because he's the one i grew up with and he was so good in the character and they really kind of stuck to the comic book um kind of characters characterizations of superman for those films um in the donner films so um and when Zack Snyder took over, he kind of went away from that. And I just, I felt like Superman suffered, uh, because of it. Um, they, he just, uh, he, he wasn't as good. Um, but Henry Cavill is in a new Netflix series called the Witcher. And I want to play you a part of this interview because it deals with something that I think, uh, is very important and needs to be talked about right now. And his answer to this, inter so this interviewer is setting him up. Um, like so many Hollywood people are being set up by the journalists right now to be able to trash people if they want. And it, it, to Henry Cavill's credit, he does not go after um, the, the fans. Um, in fact, he does the exact opposite. And uh, so let's go take a look and then we'll talk about it afterwards. I'm curious if that's comparable to this sort of world, this culture of toxic fandom, where like if you make a movie, especially if you make a superhero movie, it does, like you have great intentions, but there are always gonna be a small yet vocal group of people there can kind of just be toxic. I understand what you're saying, but when it comes to fans, it is a fan's right mm -hmm. to have whatever opinion they want to have. And people are gonna be upset because, especially when it, you're talking about books or games, because you're never going to be the exact person who they had in their head or who they played on Witcher 3, for example. I don't necessarily consider that toxic. I just consider that passionate. Mm. And it's Amen. something which I have obviously had to come to terms with over the years. And for me, with, with the comparison is not like that with Geralt walking into a bar. The comparison is more meta. It's more to do with xenophobia and... Mm and sexism and colonialism and all those effects that that has on people and then who they divert their fear and energy towards and that tends to be Geralt yep. because he's a guy who exists outside, outside of society. He's not part of a group when he walks into town. Okay, so he kind of goes on to talk more about the show there um, and stuff and it's really good. I encourage everybody to go and actually give this interview a, a watch if you're interested in um, this kind of stuff at all you know the witcher was a game and now they've made it into a tv show it's getting a second season so obviously they're doing something right but henry cavill is a tremendous actor um he's been in quite a few films um and and he always does really well um in those films he he really brings a, a believable character to those films he was in the last mission impossible did a really excellent job in that like i said in his portrayal of superman is really good given the material he had to work with um it's just if if you're in a bad film you can only do so much as an actor to save it uh you can deliver your lines and do everything you need to do but you can't save dialogue that really doesn't fit the character you know that you sh that you should have been allowed to play if that makes sense um, anyway, I just, I loved his reaction to this because this is Hollywood's new thing. Blame the fans for not liking the garbage they're putting out. Um, they're, they just, they, they put out this horrible stuff and then they trash the people who, who, who have loved this stuff their whole lives, who've loved science fiction, who've loved drama, who've loved, you know, whatever genre of film you, you, you like, and you, you are interested in. If, if the people making those films are trashing it for political agenda or for selfish interests or for, you know, their own little pet, whatever, 
yeah, that's going to put you off. It's going to make you upset. And to have them attack you for being upset because you didn't buy into their nonsense, I mean, that's just foolish. I mean, it, and self-defeating in the end. Because you depend on these people to come to your movies. Um, NECA Random has a t-shirt that um, I think is really funny and really cool if you get what she's trying to say. I think it needs a little bit more explanation than what she's got on the shirt. But it says, uh, movies are not mandatory. And she's absolutely right. Um, it's it's this, this idea that Hollywood thinks they're entitled to our money. They're entitled to our, our love and adulation. They're entitled to 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 just get whatever they want from us and this is it's the problem with our whole culture right now is this whole entitlement mentality where um everybody thinks that way wow i'm entitled to you just give me your money i don't have to i don't have to provide good customer service just give me your money get out wow i mean that's that is self-defeating as i said before that will never end up with you being successful Successful businesses are the ones that understand you don't have to come there and that you're coming there is a responsibility and that they need to treat you as, as good as they can. Now there, there are toxic people out there, but that word, that, blah, 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 that word gets thrown around way too much in our day. If you don't like something because that somebody else likes, well, you just toxic, you just don't like anything. No, I just didn't like what you were doing and that's okay. Um, but it's not it's not okay anymore. You have to like Hollywood. You have to like their political agenda driven movies, their identity politics, their their nonsense that's being shoved down or trying to be shoved down our throats. And if you don't like it, well, you're just toxic. You're just a man, baby. You're just you're just a misogynist, sexist pig, and, and you, you don't like women. <laughs> what? Yeah, okay, okay. Um, who's who's the real toxic one there? You're creating something knowing 50% of your audience isn't going to like it. Ryan Johnson stated he was trying to do that when he made The Last Jedi. He was trying to be divisive. He was trying to make half the audience hate this movie. And he, he succeeded. And then when he did, he was mad and he, he, got, he made it worse. And he, he attacked the fans that went after him for doing it, reacting exactly the way he wanted them to. So, I mean, talk, talk about like just completely unself-aware. Um, but it's, it's sad that, that that's what we're seeing and it's getting harder and harder to find good entertainment that doesn't beat you over the head with political agenda or, or the agenda of some actor or director or, or whatever. Um, and I, I wish Henry Cavill's attitude would be adopted by everybody. Now, I've liked Henry Cavill for a long time, thought he was a great actor. I remember seeing him back in The Count of Monte Cristo. It's a small part. He plays the son of The Count of Monte Cristo and the fake son of um, the the, the other character. I just lost the guy's name. Um, Anyway, but but small part, but I remembered him in it. And when I saw him in in, uh, Superman the first time, I was just like, Gosh dang, I know that guy from somewhere. And then I went back and I'm like, yeah, that that was him. And I'm and I remembered his acting from the Count of Monte Cristo. So he's very good, very talented. And uh and so I'm gonna go watch this and possibly give it a review now, this Witcher uh this Witcher TV show. Um, because I, I like that kind of stuff anyway, and I'm interested. Never played the game. Um, but you know, if he's in it and based on what he's saying here. He, he deserves my support because he, he's not out attacking his own fans and attacking the people that he knows he needs for the living that he makes. That's just smart. That's just smart. Even if he doesn't really feel this way, it's smart to say what he said. But if you watch him in this interview, he looks sincere. Like he, he doesn't have to, I mean, he sits there and thinks for a minute and he just goes, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, they're not toxic. They're just passionate. And, and, and I understand that, you know, I mean, it was just instant. It wasn't something he really had to think that much about. He, you could tell he has come to terms with this and that some people are not going to like it. And some people are, and he's just got to do the best he can and, and, and hope that everybody comes along. So anyway, I hope you like this video, like, share, and subscribe. Go give The Witcher a watch. Um, I'm going to go give The Witcher a watch, and then (laughs) 
Well, you say that three times real fast. And then uh, we'll, we'll talk about it um, maybe on some future streams or some future videos. But give me a uh, feel free to comment. Let me know what you think. Um, and, and are you watching this? Have you watched this uh, already? And tell me, is it worth it? Are you liking it? Are you enjoying it? Or is it is it got some issues? That um, but uh, anyway, uh, thanks for your time, and we will talk to you next time. Bye now.